very good evening to everyone uh, welcome to phoenix coaching center so this is one of the premier uh, coaching center in tamil nadu which has produced many agriculture officer and many uh, assistant director of horticulture a horticulture officer aos and ahos and <coughs> i am dr uh, danapal working as assistant professor in department of entomology in nadi parashakti horticulture college kalavi so i am the resource person for uh, agriculture uh, entomology so <clears throat> before starting to actual lecture so just i want to uh, remind you about one book which has been published last year uh, that is uh, phoenix instant notes on agricultural entomology and nematology so in this book we have covered almost all the uh, topic which is required for uh, abo examination so just uh, you can thoroughly go through this uh, uh, material so in this material you can cover almost all the aspect of entomology and nematology nematology things and in this class just i want to discuss about the pest of sugar cane so almost uh, uh, in this uh, day to day life almost everyone taking uh, sugar products and uh, raw sugars and uh, it is it has been uh, one of the important uh, product for in day to day life <coughs> it has been found in 5000 years ago and it has ruled uh, uh, almost 5000 years but sometime uh, especially in world war 1 and 2 the the production of sugar sugar can and uh, the production of sugar products and their dry products it has been reduced so that time the honey has reached highest market so honey is one of the uh, <coughs> substitute for sugar so that thing we will uh, see in uh, in our economic entomology so the crystallized sugar was reported 5000 years ago in the indus valley civilization located in modern day pakistan and uh, north india so about 50% production occurs in brazil and india so almost in this world uh, all the organisms Uh, they they love to eat sugar cane and its products so there are many uh, by products which is uh, which is produced from uh, sugar cane so that thing you, you may study in uh, during your agronomy classes so <clears throat> coming to actual topic of today's class so pest of sugar cane so before entering into pest of sugar cane just i want to uh, remember you about uh, the plant and their pods and their functions so the plant system it's majorly divided into two system one is root system and another one is shoot system so in root system you can find the roots which is very very important for absorption of water and minerals and in aerial part you can find the shoot system so in shoot system we can you can find the stem uh, and then you can find the leaf then you can find the flowers then you can find the uh, shoot apex then you can find the fruits then inside the fruits you can find the seeds which is very very important input for the production of next generation crop and the functions you may be knowing the root root is one of the important uh, part for absorption of water and minerals it will absorb all the water and minerals and it will uh, translocate to the aerial part and in stem system you can find the uh, <coughs> you can find phloem and xylem which is important uh, vessels which is useful to transport the uh, absorbed water and minerals to the aerial part and uh, coming to leaf in leaf you can find the chlorophyll content which is uh, uh, which is highly useful for uh, for performing the photosynthesis by performing the photosynthesis the food production can be uh, done and that food is translocated to the all the parts of the plants through phloem vessel then after flower flower is one of the important uh, part for uh, reproduction you, there you can find on the reproductive uh, parts 
then then after you can find the uh, fruits fruit is uh, which is useful for uh, for protect the seeds and that is one of the economic part of almost all the parts of the almost all types of the plants so if anything if if anything disturb this function definitely it going to impact on the yield of the particular crop so <clears throat> so almost all the insects uh, all al almost uh, all the insects uh, it will it attacking the all type all parts of the plants some insects mostly it present in the subterranean region which is a soil region that will mostly uh, bore either bore or cut the root system so that the water and nutrient translocation to the aerial part it will be stopped the, then you can find wilting and drying of the particular plant some some of the insect just bore into the stem and that will disturb the xylem and phloem vessels so once the xylem and phloem vessels has been disturbed means the water and uh, food translocation is completely interrupted in severe cases you can find the drying of uh, uh, aerial part uh, otherwise you can find the uh, drying of central shoot which is nothing but dead heart then some some insects which feeding on the leaf so that is called a defoliator so once that the leaf pot has been uh, reduced means the photosynthetic area also it will get reduced then finally it, it's it's impacting uh, food production then after flower so once the flower reproductive part has been disturbed means it won't that but it, it won't produce any fruit then some insects it it, it makes the bore holes into the fruit and uh, it will feed on the seeds then uh, once it has been done means the economic part of the uh, plant it will reduce and the seed also it will get reduced and some of the insects it will uh, attack the shoot portion so once the shoot portion has been damaged means then uh, the particular plants it may dry and some of the insects which are uh, mostly sucking insects mostly present on the shoot portion and the leaf portion it will suck the sap and produces the yellowing so how it is producing yellowing means the loss of chloros loss of chlorophyll is called chlorosis which is nothing but yellowing of leaves so while sucking the sap the chlorophyll pigment also may be absorbed by the uh, sucking insects that's why it's producing the yellowing of leaves so once the yellowing of leaves has been uh, produced means the photosynthesis it will completely damage and uh, the the it it will impact in the uh, in the yield of the particular plant so this is the normal function of the plant so <clears throat> this is how the uh, insect and microorganisms attacking the uh, plant so <clears throat> coming to sugar cane pest in sugar cane pest also you can find almost all types of this uh, uh, insects majorly the insects categorize into two parts one is borers and sucking pest so borers means it makes the borers into the plant system and affect the normal function the sucking insects just it will suck the sap from the from the uh, leaves then it will excrete so much amount of honeydew and then after you can find the shooting mold fungus on the leaf then it will reduce the photosynthesis photosynthetic area and photosynthesis also and coming to borers so there are three important borers which will uh, attack the sugar cane the first one is early shoot borer chyloinfus catullus then second one is internode borer chylosaccharifagus indicus the third one is top borer scirpophaga exceptalis so we'll see one by one so first one is early shoot borer chyloinfus catullus the name itself indicates that this borer it will attack the early stage of the crop so mostly this favor by the condition called uh, high high temperature and low humidity so what it will do is that it will prefer the prefer to attack one to three months of uh, three months old crop so the caterpillar just makes you can see in this picture the caterpillar just makes the bore holes into the uh, base of the stem and enter inside and uh, it will disturb the uh, vascular bundles especially xylem and phloem so once the xylem and phloem vessels has been disturbed means 
the water and nutrient translocation to the aerial part, especially the central shoot, it will be completely stopped. Then you can find dead heart or drying of drying of central shoot. So <clears throat> the, this central shoot, which can be easily pulled out, so that is a, one of the important symptoms. So these are the important symptoms of chylo infest catalysis. So bore, you can find the bore holes and uh, rotten portion in the base of the stem. And uh, uh, this is the side tiller formation. So this is one of the tolerant characters. So sometimes if anything uh, happens to the central shoot, the plants immediately will produce the side shoot. Okay, side shoots are side tiller. So this side tiller formation also you can find during the infestation of this early shoot borer. Then you can mainly you can find the dead heart and uh, easily you can pull out this dead heart. Why? Because uh, in the base po basal portion, you can find the rotten, uh, rotten portion because of which uh, it will, while uh, pulling out, you can easily uh, find full smell. Okay, so this is the offensive order. Okay, it will emit the offensive order. So that is the important symptom of uh, L.E. shoot borer. So these are the some of the uh, stages of L.E. shoot borer. So the larva, which is mostly it is dull white in color and easily you can find five wild, five violet stripes dorsally and dorsal ventrally and it will pupate inside the shoot portion and uh, this is the adult so adult mostly dirty white in color and second one is chylo saccharifagus indicus which is internode borer crampidae and envertebra so this uh, internode borer and top shoot borer mostly attack the uh, sugarcane during the late stage of the crop growth. So mostly it will attack the affect the crop after third or fourth month when internode begins to form and continues till the time of harvest. So just it makes the um, the mostly the adult it will lay the eggs in the uh, lower surface of the leaves. Then the larva, which is hatched out from the eggs, just it makes the bore holes in the internodal portion. Here you can see the bore holes and enter inside. And uh, same like early shoot borer, this also it produces the central shoot. The thing is that the early shoot borer, it will attack the early stage of the crop and internode borer and uh, top shoot borer, it will attack the crop during the late stage of the growing phase. And uh, <coughs> this, uh, both internode borer and top shoot borer, it's uh, favored uh, for its multiplication during uh, low temperature and high humidity. So that is the condition uh, which uh, this insect, it will multiply like anything. And uh, <clears throat> then the important symptom is, if you split open, you, here you can find the uh, internal tissues which has been uh, Form, which has been formed into reddish in color. Okay, so in uh, in diseases also we can find some of the uh, symptoms. Okay, so don't confuse with the chylo infest chylo saccharifagus indigus. And this is the uh, larva and the pupa of chylo saccharifagus indigus. So mostly here you can find four violet stripes. And uh, the larva also, it's looked like uh, uh, LH uber. The thing is that here you can find black markings on the wings. And top should bore it. So, Scripophaga exceptalis, Pyrastidae, and Lepidoptera. So, this is the third bore. So, this is also, it will attack the crop during the later stage of the crop growth. And uh, the, uh, the adult mostly it will lay the eggs in the lower surface of the leaves. The, the larva, which is hatched out from the eggs, just it makes just mo mostly it will migrate in the mid -re midrib region of the sugar cane leaf, and it makes the uh, parallel holes in the midribs of the uh, sugar cane leaves, and uh, and again it will enter into the shoot portion, and uh, it will makes the bore holes and enter inside, and uh, it will interrupt the um, water and nutrient translocation because of which you can find the uh, drying of central shoot so that is called dead heart and the plant again due to the tolerant character it will produces the side tiller side tiller 
because of which you can find bunchy top appearance. So this is the bunchy top appearance in the uh, apex portion. So this is the parallel side walls which is produced by the larva of Scyphophaga exceptalis. Okay, so this is the larva and this is the adult. So adult mostly it's uh, whitish in color. So that is about the borers of uh, borers of uh, sugarcane. So next one is uh, some of the subterranean pests also attacking the sugarcane and some of the sap sucking insects also attacking the uh, sugarcane. So subterranean pest means the pest which is present in the soil. So mostly the some of the insects, uh, some of the larva which is present in the soil, uh, that, 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 that larva uh, mostly it will attack the root portions, just either it makes uh, bore holes in the root system, otherwise it will cut the roots and rootlets because of which the water and nutrient translocation to the aerial part, it will be completely stopped. And when this subterranean pest attacking the crop, mostly you can find the wilting, wilting and drying of the uh, <clears throat> drying of the plants in the patches, so the in white grub. In white grub, almost all the crops you can uh, study like uh, the wilting and drying of uh, plants in patches is due to like, so that is that symptom is mostly produced by white grub. Then termites, it's one of the important pests and one of the notorious pests in sugarcane. Uh, Orontotermis obesus, white grub, Olotrachia consanguina. And some of the aphid also, it attacking the root system, it will suck the sap from the uh, root, uh, then it will interrupt the uh, normal function. So that is uh, root borer, tetranura javans javansis, then some of the sap sucking insects also. So, so this sap sucking insects, just it present in the lowest surface, it will suck the sap and excrete so much amount of honeydew. So that honeydew deposit on the uh, lower leaves of upper surface and uh, uh, in the on the honeydew we can find the black shooty mold fungus also and because of which the photosynthetic area it will be completely reduced and in severe cases you can find the drying of the particular plants so likewise you can find the white fly allirolobus barodensis then leaf over pyrilla percusilla then mealybug also you can find Kirsinkilla saccari or saccari caucus saccari. Then scale, you can find melano, melanospis glomerata. Then sugar can only if it also you can find that saratovacana lanigera. So apart from this, some of the other pest, uh, other numerous pest also is there. So likewise, some of the, uh, some economically important pest is aphid and black wing fly like bug that is proista moista. And first one we will see Sugarcane leaf hopper. This is one of the important sap sucking insects in sugarcane, Pyrilla percusilla, Lopopidae, Hemiptera. So, this is present in the lower surface of the leaves, and this is look like aeroplane. So, that's why the common name of this Lopopidae is aeroplane bug. Why? Because the, here you can find beak uh, in uh, or snout in air, its larger condition or longer condition. That's why it's it's, it's being called aeroplane bug. And the mostly nymphs and adults, it present in the lower surface of the leaves, suck the sap and produces the yellowing and drying of leaves. And as I said in previous slide, it excretes so much amount of honeydew. So that honeydew secretion, it deposit on the uh, upper surface of the lower leaves, then shooting mold fungus, it may grow. Then the com completely the photosynthesis it will be completely stopped and in, in final stage you can find the drying and drying of particular leaves so this is the uh, this is the some of the important stages of uh, sugarcane leaf hopper The next one is scale, and for I forgot to tell about the sugarcane leaf hopper. So this sugarcane leaf hopper, Pyrilla percusilla, this mostly favored for its multiplication during the uh, mild winter followed by a mild summer, 
and the failure of monsoon time also it will be abundant and uh, if sometime the the natural enemy called uh, epicarnia melanolica which I, which i will tell in uh, further slide so if the activity of the natural enemy is also reduced during that time this uh, uh, sugarcane leaf hopper it will uh, multiply like anything then next one is sugarcane scale so sugarcane scale just uh, uh the scientific name is melana melanaspis glomerata so belongs to family diaspidae and belongs to order hemiptera so this is the uh, symptom of uh, sugarcane scale so mostly it will cover the nodal or uh, stem portion of the sugarcane and it will stack the sap and because of which the you can find shriveling and stinking of uh, the nodal portion and stem portion of sugarcane and next one is mealy bug kirtsinkula sakari otherwise called as uh, sakari coccus sakari so this is belongs to family of pseudococci and belongs to order of hemiptera so this also like like other sap sucking insects so this also present in the lower surface and uh, most importantly the mealy bug it will attack the shoot portion or reproductive portion so why because in shoot portion and reproductive portion only the mealy bugs or other sap sucking insects can get more nutri nutrients and the uh, sap so that's why the especially mealy bug it will attack the uh, shoot portion or uh, <coughs> reproductive portion so it is present in the leaf sheath near the nodal region it will suck the sap and it will excrete so much amount of honeydew secretion because of that uh, you can uh, find the shooting mold fungus growth also once the shooting mold fungus has been grown on the leaf means definitely the photosynthetic area also completely reduce so photosynthesis reduced means the food production is completely reduced and it will affect in the it will affect in the yield of the crop or sometimes in severe cases the particular uh, plant it may dry and pilt and another important thing if any sucking sap sucking insects attack means you can find the uh, movement of ant so this is the important symptom to identify the infestation of sap sucking insects in the uh, field so if you find any ants movement in the field means definitely that field is completely uh, infested with sap sucking insects then the next one is white fly alirolobus barodensis so this is also uh, like other sap sucking insects it is present in the lower surface the important thing and the exam point of view is <coughs> the adult the nymphs are sedentary the adults are migratory adults are very much active if you touch the leaf means the adults fly like anything whereas the nymphs won't migrate from here to there so just it will settle in the lower surface continuously suck the sap and it will develop into adult so it is present in the lower surface suck the sap and uh, after draining the uh, sap here you can find uh, leaf drying okay. so next one is black wing fly like bug so this is uh, proista moista so this is belongs to derbidae and belongs to order of uh, hemiptera so this is also it will produce us the same symptom like other sap sucking insects then aphid melana spis uh, sakari and melana spis indo sakari so this is belongs to family epididae and belongs to order hemiptera so this is also present in the lower surface of the leaves so here you can find the the aphids present on the lower surface to suck the sap and another important thing is this will transmit the grassy shoot disease and mosaic disease so this is very very important so in exam point of view you can uh, they may ask uh, the vector for grassy shoot disease or mosaic disease and another important uh, pest of sugarcane is sugarcane woolly aphid so this is one of the invasive pest or non native pest so in exam uh, the, uh, you can expect one question uh, which is uh, uh, based on invasive pest mostly recent invasive pest they may ask 
So this sugar can test during 2002 only, it has been reported in uh, India. So previously it was not at all problem. So why it is called as Uli feed means this is actually a feed only, but it has been covered with Uli uh, wax material for protective purpose. So that's why it's called sugar can Uli feed. So the scientific name is Sarato Vacuna Lanigera. So this is belongs to family Aphididae and belongs to order Homoptera. So this is also like previous uh, sap sucking insects here you can find the hay feed it's present in the lower surface it will suck the sap and in upper surface it will produces the yellowing of leaves and in addition it will excrete so much amount of uh, honeydew secretion and because of which it, the shooty mold fungus it may grow okay so this is the important uh, uh, symptom of uli aphid so this is the uh, uli aphid which is present in the lower surface and this is the shooting mode fungus. It has been covered with entire leaf. Okay. And next one is subterranean infest, termites, odontotermis obesus, termitidae, isoptera. So termite is a major problem in only two crops. One is uh, wheat and another one is sugarcane. So on, on other crops under this is does not problematic. And <clears throat> This is a very much problem in sugarcane during uh, during germination or while planting of sugarcane. So just it makes uh, just it will enter in, uh, inside the uh, nodal uh, in, enter inside the seeds of uh, sugarcane and it will feed entire uh, internal content of the uh, sugarcane and it will fill the uh, internal portion with mud. Okay. And in addition, uh, the first uh, emerged leaves also you can find drying and uh, this uh, this one it will easily we can pull out. Okay, so because the the root uh, root portion it does not develop. So if you pull out this uh, sugar can set means it will easily come out. Okay, so this is the important symptom. So the poor germination of sets uh, after planting. The characteristics of semicircular feeding marks also you can find and if you pull out the shoe portion it easily come out then sets hallowed inside and it may be filled with soil so here you can find and can collapses if disturbed so if you, if you just, just touches slightly it will uh, it will fall down and the rind it is fully covered with mud and this is the important symptom of Termites. Then coming to next subterranean pest is white grub, Holotrichia consanguina. So this is belongs to family Melolonthidae and belongs to order Coleoptera. So in exam point of view, they may ask uh, which of the following is annual pest. So kindly mute. So this is the annual pest. So annual pest means the insect, it will complete the life cycle. Uh, only, only It will produce us the only one generation per year. So that is called annual pest. So this pest also, it will complete their life cycle. Uh, it, otherwise it will took the life cycle to complete the uh, generation per all, all over <coughs> year. So that's why it's called as annual pest. And uh, this pest, so mostly it attack the root system. Mostly it will attack the root system. And in this, the grub only it will attack the sugarcane crop, whereas the adults mostly present on the leaf, acacia, and ailanthus leaves. Neem, acacia, and ailanthus. So this is the three important crop for adult. So if you find any uh, neem, leaf, neem tree which has been located near the sugar can fill means you should destroy otherwise you can shake the uh, the branches means the <coughs> white grub adults it may fall down and easily you can collect the adult and you can kill out so that is a important management practices so this grub is mostly present in the soil region 
So as I said in previous slide, the soil in soil region only you can find the roots and rootlets. The roots and rootlets is one of the important parts which will absorb the root, absorb the water and minerals, and it will translocate to the aerial part. Then this uh, grubs, what it will do is that just it will cut roots and rootlets. Once the roots and rootlets has been cut down, means the water and nutrient translocation to the aerial part, it will be completely stopped. And because of that, you can find wilting and drying of plants in patches, mostly present in the patches. So that's why you can find wilting and drying of uh, uh, plants in the patches. So that is the important symptom. So in the exam, mostly they will ask wilting uh, and drying of uh, sugarcane sugar can plants or groundnut plants in patches is due to. So that is mostly white grub only. White grub only, it will produce the uh, produce this kind of symptom and this also uh, the <coughs> this type of sugar can this type of affected sugar can also if you if you pull out means easily it will come out because the roots and rootlets has been not uh, means it has been cut down so because of that the anchorage of roots and rootlets in the soil it will be weak so that if you pull out means it will easily come out that is the important symptoms and things the, <clears throat> the adult the adult host plants is neem acacia ailanthus so this three crop is very very important in the exam they may ask the what is uh, uh, what are the host of uh, sugarcane uh, white grub adult so in the uh, in option they may give a option neem, B ailanthus, C acacia, D all of the above. So you should mark uh, all of the above only. So this is the attack of white grub. So white grub mostly present in the soil portion. So just you can see that it, it is cut down all, all the roots and rootlets, and because of which the water and the nutrient translocation to the airy pot is completely stop okay so coming to management practices for controlling this uh, sugar can pest is so first uh, in in north india uh, in almost all the crops after harvest of all the crops just they will burn out the field why because uh, the so <clears throat> mostly the resting stage of Insects mostly present in the residue in the residues of uh, sugarcane or other plants. So, if you burn out the field, means completely can be uh, the completely the insect stages also it may it may burn. So that's why this is one of the important practices to uh, to control all the insect pest. And next one is earthing up. So in sugarcane they will do earthing up. So this is useful to control early shoot borer. So earthing up means just covering the basal surface, uh, basal portion of the plants with soil. So why it is, how it is controlling the early shoot borer means, as I said in previous slide only, the early shoot borer just it makes the boreholes in the basal portion of the shoot or basal portion of the stem. So now the boreholes, it is present in the basal portion. So if we cover the boreholes with the soil means the oxygen, the absorption of oxygen by the larva, it will be completely stopped. Then it may kill within the, within the uh, plant system. So then you can uh, further transmission or further multiplication also, it will be completely stopped. So that is how the earthing up can be helpful for control of early shoot borer. So in the exam, they may ask, so earthing up is useful to control. So that is early shoot borer. Only. Then thrash mulching. So thrash mulching also one of the important uh, technique to control almost uh, early shoot borer and uh, internode borer and uh, sugar, can, uh, sugar can white fly. Then some of the sap sucking insects. So just you can uh, remove the remove the older leaves then 
you can uh, either you can burn out otherwise you can go for thrash mulching then release of spermiopsis inference which is highly useful to control the early shoot borer so in always while studying pest uh, uh, portion you have to study about symptoms then management practices management practices also you have to study about the specific cultural practices specific specific physical practices specific mechanical practices specific biocontrol agents that portions only you have to concentrate more in the exam they mostly they won't ask uh, which chemical is useful to control which insect so that that type of questions mostly they will avoid mostly they will ask uh, which biocontrol agent is useful to control which insect so otherwise which mechanical practices control which insect so that type of questions only you can expect in pest portion so likewise the spermi of spermiopsis inference which is nothing but tachnid fly it's highly useful to control the early shoot borer and the trichogramma trichogramma kylonis which is nothing but egg parasite okay so the Uh, normally natural enemies it is divided into two types one is parasitoid and predators so pra- parasitoids it requires only one host to complete the life cycle whereas predator require many prey to complete the life cycle so that is the difference between predator and parasitoid so in parasitoid also there are many types of parasitoids are there so some uh, one is egg parasitoid larval parasitoid and the people parasite nympha and adult parasite so some of the insect it will attack the egg of the pest egg uh, that parasite is called egg parasite some some parasite it will attack the larval stage of the pest so that is called larval parasite some parasite it will attack the pupal stage so that is called pupal parasite so this is the egg parasite which is one of the successful biocontrol agent to control the sugarcane borers so this is one of the frequent question you may expect in exam so trichogramma kylonis is is a egg parasite which is useful to control dash uh, in uh, <coughs> in option they may give early shoot borer internode borer top shoot borer and the last option is all the above then you should click all the above option only why because it is useful to control all type of borers so here you can find the adult parasite so that adult parasite just it lay the eggs and the uh, just it lay the eggs now the parasite egg is present in the pest egg then <coughs> the parasite egg immediately it will hatch out and it will feed on the embryonic portion of the pest so that the pest uh, larva it won't emerge from the egg so that is called egg parasite so this is trichogramma kylonis trichogramma kylonis that species name is it's very important so sometimes they may ask trichogramma kylonis trichogramma japanicum likewise trichogramma australasia australia so like likewise they may ask they, they may give an exam so but uh, for controlling sugar cane borer trichogramma kylonis only is highly useful so next isotema javansis so this is one of the important uh, natural enemy or parasite to control the sugar cane top shoot borer sugar cane top shoot borer it it will control okay. then biological control of sugar cane woolly aphid so for controlling the sugar cane woolly aphid uh, you can release the micromus igrotus which is nothing but brown lace wing and uh, you can release some sirfid insect called epiotus contractor then you can release some dipa epidivora dipa epidivora which is nothing but uh, lepidopteran uh, insect uh, you can release and you can control the sugar cane woolly aphid okay so this is also this three species also it's very very important in exam point of view they may ask uh, which of the following biocontrol agent is useful to control the sugar cane woolly aphid so this is one of the repeated question in almost all the exam but as i said in previously the management practices so for controlling the sugar cane uh, early shoot borer the early planting is highly useful 
then dethrashing dethrashing is nothing but removing of older leaves so that is called dethrashing it's useful to control internal borer and stock borer and manuring so always you have to avoid the excess use of nitrogenous fertilizers so if you use most uh, uh, nitrogenous fertilizers means it will invite the borers and sucking insects and removal of dust removal and destruction of infested can so this is useful to control hellish borer and gardasper borer and this is useful to control almost all type of insects so when if if any insect has been uh, present in the field means first you have to remove and destroy the infested plants or infested portions so that will avoid the multiplication okay so in almost all the management practices you will study first management practices is collection and destruction of infested leaves or infested plants then after you can search for life stages next one is collection and destruction of eggs or larvas or pupa which is present in the leaves so if you collect and burn it means the further multiplication it will be completely stopped and there are some of the resistant varieties also some of the resistant varieties also has been developed by uh, by tneu uh, sugar cane breeding uh, institute and uh, <clears throat> iiss indian institute of sugar cane iiss indian institute of sugar cane research which is located at lucknow uttar pradesh so they have developed many varieties of resistant varieties okay, which is useful to control the borers and irrigation at closer levels for managing the early shoot borer so why because if you irrigate frequently means the water it will enter inside the inside the boreholes boreholes of the sugar cane then it will kill the uh, early shoot borer once it has been entered means the oxygen supply it will be completely stopped so that is how it will affect the that that is how it will kill the borers and as i said previously the biocontrol or biological control of sugar cane borers for controlling early shoot borer stermiopsis inference and trichogramma kylanus is highly useful so for uh, trichogramma kylanus is useful to control all type of borers isotema javensis is specifically for top shoot borer then for controlling of uh, pyrilla epicarnia melanoleuca epicarnia melanoleuca is one of the important lepidopteran parasitoid one of the important lepidopteran parasitoid which is useful to control the sugar cane pyrilla so this is also one of the important question in exam they may ask which lepidopteran insect is useful to control the sugar cane pyrilla so that is epicarnia melanoleuca why because this is the only lepidopteran insect which is useful to control which, which acting as a uh, predator or parasite and remaining all the lepidopteran insect acting as a pest so this is in exam point of view this is one of the important uh, thing then next one is sugar cane scale so for sugar cane for controlling sugar cane scale so the sugar cane scale mostly present in the nodal portion of the stem otherwise base lower surface of the leaves so if you remove if you remove the older uh, leaves means it will minimize the attack of the sugar cane then while selecting the set you have to be very very careful why because it is attacking the uh, stem portions okay so if you choose the uh, set which has been already affected by the scale means again multiplication it will be high so that's why you have to select the pest free sites then avoid water stagnation for longer time so water stagnation is always it or, or always create the humidity so that will uh, provide congenial condition for development of all the sugar cane pest so that also should be avoid and dethrashing dethrashing also one of the important technique to control all type of uh, sucking insects then hot water treatment before planting so hot water treatment also uh, if you go for hot water treatment it will control or it will kill the sugar cane skin then you can uh, ramsey you can go for planting then <clears throat> biocontrol agents so some of the 
bio control agents which is highly useful to control the sugarcane scale so first one is kylonorus species then predative mite saniosulus nudus thyrophagus trachensia then predator called paras paraskimnus horni then kylocorus nigritus then for as i said in previous slide only uh, the sugarcane scale it's it's highly attacked by the three important predator predators the first one is brown lacewing uh, micromus igrotus then dipa epidivora then sirpids okay then in, in addition you can go for uh, planting of uh, uh, wide row planting or pad row planting also it will highly useful to control this sugarcane woolly aphid and the important thing is sugarcane woolly aphid is invasive pest invasive pest or non native insect okay so avoid planting of sugarcane under or around the trees in order to prevent the perpetration of white woolly aphid sugarcane white woolly aphid why because sugarcane white uh, woolly aphid it having some alternate host also mostly present in the bamboo bamboo trees okay so removal of water shoot so removal of water shoot means the side shoot which is once once the woolly aphid is one woolly aphid or any borer's attack means you can find side shoot okay so if if you allow the side shoot means the multiplication of this woolly aphid also it will be high so we have to remove the water shoot and dethrashing dethrashing also one of the important technique to control this woolly aphid okay so this is the test of uh, uh, sugar can so thank you very much so if anybody is there kindly ask question so <clears throat> so always you have to study entomology in the point of uh, exam in exam point of view in, in case of pest portion you have to first uh, if you if you are reading uh, sugar can pest means first you have to list out the important pest or list out the pest of sugar can then uh, you have to uh, note down the important symptom one or two symptoms only okay then important management practices mostly cultural practices physical practices mechanical practices then uh, some of the biocontrol agents so biocontrol agents which is useful to control the uh, pest and at last you can read the uh, chemicals mostly in exam they won't ask the chemicals uh <clears throat> apart from chemicals they will ask other uh, ipm practices okay so but <clears throat> in sugar in pest of sugar can mostly they will ask two or three uh, biocontrol agents because uh, sugar can la da vandu pathina vandu success story biocontrol agent vachu nariya success stories vandu irukku so anala vandu pathina sugar can ku theriyum biocontrol agents da romba romba important any doubt nobody is there if there is no doubt i will end the session Thank you so much.